Hi everyone, how's it going? Tim here and uh, today I want to um, continue coding our um, front end and you know we actually finished the whole um, logic part and you know our unit tests and everything so now it's very much ready for deployment. So this is what we are going to be doing today or at least you know try to start it a bit. Um, let me see, so we are going to go to our projects uh, folder. Mm. If I sound a bit cranky, uh, that's because I'm slightly sick or, you know, I guess uh, caught a bit of a cold. So, you know, that's why. Right. So um, I think before we start doing deployment uh, for um, client side, we need to do this one bug that um, keeps popping up. For some reason, the unit test for server actually failing in GitLab. Um, so we're going to check that real quick and fix it, um, I think. Let me fire up. Um, I think we're going to go to server here and fire up the VS code. Okay, there you go. Um, let's, you know what, wait a second. We, we I think we need a note. Oh, sorry. Duh, what was it? MongoDB? Yeah, right. Okay, npm run db create. Um, wait, the question is, do I, yeah, the, what? Do I have anything? Oh, yeah, I do have a bunch of stuff running uh, for my work projects docker remove uh, everything there we go okay npm run db start there we go and uh, what uh, no such wait what oh no it wasn't start it was something else right db create okay yeah right we separated the commands I'm starting to forget how that works and then so many different projects <laughs> npm test okay let's see if that actually fails locally I mean, theoretically, that should work just fine, right? Uh, yes, allow. All right, I've updated. No, okay, so locally, that works just fine. Uh, what if we rerun the test? That's still the case. Uh, yes, it is. So why the hell does it fail online? Um, what is the difference here? Let's see the pipeline. Um, failed test server, yes, so, okay. So it actually da 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 da. Okay, here's our failed test API question. Uh, retrieve the same question. Okay, so the questions are it seems swapped. Um, that must mean that they are not so API get. No, I mean they are sorted here, right? So they're sorted by creation date. Um, which means that create question should uh, to do, 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 get latest get question. So create question should do. So right, okay. So here we create the first question, and here we create the second question. I mean, they should execute an order. So unless there's something create question with different user. So I can see create one question, where's the other one? Creating, yeah, so they should be executed in order, right? Um, that is very confusing. Answer existing question, yes. Uh, what the hell is going on? So shared input text. Uh, do you like my awful coding? Should be first, right? Actual, oh, wait, how does it work? <laughs> Um, okay, that is confusing. So wait, that is second question. Second question is shared input other, right? So this should be second one. So why the hell are they length two? Yes, uh, no, that is actually incorrect here. So which means that first one should actually be shared input, right? And then should be uh, user. Um, Okay, now I'm very confused. Uh, no, wait, shared input. Creation date, yes, and this should be shared input other, and this should be other user. So, theoretically, that should be the case, right? Because we first create the um, shared input one, and then we create the other one. Or wait, do I sort them? in reverse, then that would make sense. No, I don't. I order them descending by creation date, which means, or wait, is it 
descending, right? So the new ones would be, yeah, okay, that actually was correct. So what the hell? So it's descending. And uh, which means that, yeah, right, this one should be first, this one should be second. So why? <laughs> what is going on here? Uh, yeah, that is so they have different, obviously have different users and different because they are swapped here. Okay, let's try connect localhost server test image npm test. Um, wait, I am running right now on a live MongoDB as far as I remember what happens here actually because I don't. Oh, no, we're, we're, I'm, I'm not even, why am I, wait, <laughs> right, why am I, um, okay, now I'm starting to confuse projects. Yes, man, we're using your thing to be, and in this case, we're running Reculite, okay, Docker, stop, oh, maybe that's the case, maybe, because I think, um, let me think, Sublime, we need, yeah, no, I, I want Git, uh, GitLab CI. So our test server uh, is just, yeah, so npm test without having the um, any instance of the database, right? I guess that's the case. So is that a bug in the, is that a bug in, in the Reculite thing? Um, okay, let's see, npm outdated. Do we have any outdated packages here? Reculite, super test. Um, I mean, there's a bunch. Maybe the didn't, but doesn't seem like the um, Reculite is. So, which means that we actually either, yeah, so that's, that's definitely a bug in Reculite, right? Because it works with a proper database. So, one way would, to fix that would be to say, um, the hell do you yeah I guess then we have to docker run um, I mean I guess I can just take the do, 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 let me think a bit I can take the DB create thing and do that right um, so we don't actually need most of those parameters so we can say docker run minus D we don't need port forwarding here we just need name experts DB we're under thing to be and then in this case, we do link um, experts DB as experts DB. And uh, ta -ta -ta, let me think. So in this case, there we go. So Reculite server. Um, let me think Reculite. Uh, we need to tell it to connect to the correct database, right? <laughs> Okay, they even have tests failing right now. That's a bit ugly. Oh well. Okay, server create connection, uh, new Reculite. So start, um, where do we create the connection? That is from main, okay. Uh, ta -ta -ta. DB think you ready? I know this is already, so it creates the connection automatically. Uh, Reculite, okay, this is the redash usage. Do, 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 do. How do I provide parameters? Come on, thing, show me. I mean, may, maybe we can. No, that that won't really work well. Um, let me think. Uh, they have the API link somewhere or something using in browser. No roadmap issues tracker. Ta 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 ta. Hmm. Okay. Um. Live, live. I guess we have to read the source code, right? Index.js, um, server, options, there we go, that's what we want. And uh, port, port is fine, we need a host here, server version of key, protocol. Um, so this options thing is name, silent, create connection, local connection. So what does this local connection do? I guess local connection will always use uh, localhost. Is that how it works? This server socket server version of key protocol. 
local connection server. Okay, that's a bit too far. Um, no, 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 no. This, uh, I need server, so this. Okay, um, I guess I have to open it in a second tab to actually make sense of it. Um, local connection. Self client mid connect a, a new connection to server socket. Uh, okay, I guess we have to look in a socket. Oh man, uh, no, that's not what I wanted to do. Du -du 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 -du. Duplicate. Um, like, yeah, sometimes you gotta do that stuff and debug someone else's library. Um, so where is, what are those socket things? Where do they come from? Or is it like the socket socket, like the system socket variable, I guess so. So no JS socket. Yeah, I guess it comes from net, right? Net socket, there we go. Um, so we use so just new socket. Mm, it doesn't make any sense. I don't see any reference to socket here. Wait, okay, I'm ah no wait there is socket. Okay, it's <laughs> God damn it is just embedded here. Uh, open true inherit socket of animator set around write date. Okay, so this nothing really fancy here. Where the hell does the server name comes from? Create server. Maybe that's the one. Create server. Net, net server, so this is Node.js. Okay, create server, connection, listen. Okay, you know, this is the endpoint for the server, right? Database. Everything mm -hmm. be. Driver port. Uh, okay, let's look at the database. Table drop, table creep. No, nah, that's not what we want as well. Is there a connection maybe? Connection ID, option server. That is confusing as hell. Okay. Uh, I mean, one way would be to run NPM test without actually packaging the, uh, so before building the image. That could be the solution here. Um, yeah, so it's like, that, don't know, just close this. Then, yeah, I guess, I guess let's go with this because uh, that's that's a bug that I'm not willing to spend a lot of time to fix. And you know, it's, it's in the other library and uh, maybe we'll do another episode on swapping out the uh, libraries, like changing actually the backend and maybe, you know, like refactoring from, um, what do you call it? from a thing to be to say MongoDB or something along those lines, but we'll see how it goes. So first we're gonna test and we're gonna build and then we're gonna release. In this case, test server is gonna use image uh, node.js latest. So because we're gonna run a node, we're gonna have services uh, that are gonna be with thing DB here. And uh, in this case, we're just gonna run NPM, to, uh, we cannot, no, we, uh, yeah, we cannot do that as well, right? Because it's still gonna use, uh, because RethinkDB is gonna be on RethinkDB host in this case, and we still need um, import into your page, go on RethinkDB dash, that, how the hell do you provide it? Yeah, okay, I mean, oh, this is, now this is getting annoying. So you cannot specify, like it connects to the server, but you cannot specify it um, to the server test image. I mean, we, I guess we can just try to pull it and maybe, uh, but we don't actually need to pull it, right? So Docker PS minus A um, and PM test, this will fail consistently, right? Because the sorting in the, um, re what do you call it? I forgot, where's my VS code, I closed it. Why did I close it? I don't remember. Um, okay, so let's see, question. So our code is fine. The problem is in um, Reculite. Right, so what we can do, I guess, is we can try to module Reculite. 
uh, yeah, let's, let's go this. So, um, let's try, no, okay. Um, I mean, the problem basically is in this question test, which uses, uh, or rather question, question parameter that uses this order by thing and the descending sorting doesn't seem to work. This ascending. No, this is not ascending. This is something else. Um, I guess we want to query. Maybe this thing. Query continue stop run. TR. God, that looks complicated. <laughs> Yes, or, or, um, to, to evaluate. Okay, do, do they have any part related to sorting? Uh, AB, uh, okay, they don't seem to, if that's the only sorting they actually do, there is seven matches. Okay, so maybe this is what occurs too. Okay. Uh, indexes, there's definitely what? hours of time zone is definitely not what we want. So this is the only place they sort actually, right? And uh, binary to array, curves to string, yeah, which doesn't seem, okay, let's, you know what, let's try to find sort. Oh, I am an idiot. I should have removed that and then a search would probably work fine. Um, so we search for disk, right? Query prototype disk, there we go. Uh, search RET promise result new desk. Okay, so we need the uh, yeah, okay, there are actually tests for that. So, why the hell does it work in a exactly opposite order from what the database does? Uh, do 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 do, yes, okay, so. This is query and where's this desk thing? Yeah, there it is, desk thing, but um, desk may only be used in order to order by. Yeah, okay, this is fine. Desk value. Resolve new desk args. Um, okay. And then how exactly is it executed? Control structures. Order by desk, order by ID or desk. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so I guess we need order by. Um, there we go. Evaluate. Bind and da, 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 evaluate internal frame push to sequence. Sequence order by. So what the hell is this sequence thing? Is something returned by evaluate? I guess right. Yeah. Uh, okay, order by, so sequence, do we have a sequence here? Yes, we do. Order by, let's have a look here. Um, there we go. Sequence sorts, new se Why do you have so many abstractions? It's sometimes very, <laughs> like creating too many abstractions usually is, you know, can be just as bad as not creating enough. Um, but I don't know if we really need that stuff. Okay, they have this order by, yeah, there we go. Sort, left, right, left fill length, uh, greater than. If order is ascending, otherwise minus one. I mean, in our case, I think the order is descending, right? Um, we can, I guess we can try to debug that. Let's just console log. Yes, uh, and then log order. And in this case, because we don't want to see all the, all the, uh, yeah, that would take a while. So that's, I mean, I think there's not that many sorting um, applied. So theoretically, uh, right, that won't show us any errors because it just will um, eat the top spec, will just eat all the messages, right? So we want that. Okay, do we actually see the logging from there? Does it really seem so? Oh yeah, there we go. Descending, so that's that's correct. Uh why 
is that the, due to data types? Is that the problem? Uh, util, okay, I guess this is the util problem then. Um, right, LT, uh, yes, there you go. So left, right is document. Uh, that's, it's not document, right? I think. Um, Left, right, yeah. So let's 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 print out the values as well because we have to know what we're actually comparing, right? Uh, so it might be worth if we find the bug. It might be worth creating a pull request to fix it, but I'm not sure. Like they have unit tests for that, so why is it why is it failing? Uh, it should be somewhere here. There you go. Require type time epoch time. Yeah, so this one is bigger, right? So it's theoretically the right one should be, um, okay. And then let's do this lower than just to know where we're actually coming from. It's poor man's debugging. <laughs> um, all right. There we go. Um, so we're going greater than actually. So the first one and left one is no, it's not. Like, how is this greater than this? <laughs> um, yeah, okay. Uh, if right instance of max while, no, it's not. Sequence type left, no, type number, uh, record type. So we need to find this record type string. Wait, it's not existent. Is that what you tell me? There's no comparison of, or is it all the LT? Ad okay, we're actually looking for GT, right? Okay. Oh yeah, that that. I mean, okay, that makes sense. Ah, uh, yeah, there you go. Uh, epoch time, epoch time. Yes. So this is exactly what happens. Am I right? So let's check console log compare time. Just copy the arguments over here, and that is should be like this. Let's run test and see. Does it compare times? Uh, no, it doesn't. It doesn't seem to compare times at all, as far as I can see. So why what? Util is date. Okay, what does this is date do? Uh, where is it? Is date equals date instance of regulate date. Regular date, where you defined. Uh, there was a um, date JS. Okay. Um, that looks correct. Right, okay, so we said, do, do, do. I mean, it's not error, it's not minval, it's not maxval, it's not, it shouldn't be sequence, it shouldn't be boolean, it shouldn't be null, it shouldn't be number. It is not plain object and it has record type. I mean, it is plain object, but it has record type. It's not binary, it should be date, right? Um, ta -ta -ta -ta, left is date. Let's check if that actually works. Does it not detect it as date? That would be the weirdest issue ever. It doesn't seem so. It doesn't seem to even come to this point. That is so weird. Um, I'm kind of scared. So we have this object which has regular type. Uh, I guess it falls through that. Which actually shouldn't happen. Play. I mean, let's, let's see. Left is plain. Let's call it this way. Is it just counts it as plain object? would be the dumbest thing ever. No, it's not. Okay. 
I am. I mean, uh, we can actually try, I think the new version of Visual Studio Code should be able to place a breakpoint in there. Um, the only thing is that we'll have to run in PM test, not node index. Um, to, 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 let me think. What was it? Reculite, right? Because this will take ages to debug manually. And this is we need utils and we need lower than um, t equal. There we go. So if I place a breakpoint over here, and then in debugging, I say um, launch program. No, not this. We need to launch um, test, right? So there we go. Uh, did we get a breakpoint? Yeah, we did. Or did we? Output problems. Um, Okay, step over. I don't think we wait, where is it? I that didn't seem to work. Is it because of the Yeah, it doesn't seem to break actually where we need to break. Launch program type node, yeah. Attach to process. That doesn't seem to be working, I guess, because of the Babel and all that kind of stuff. Um, now that's a bit disappointing. But okay, um, to do what geometry, array bool number, object string time. Okay. Um, I mean, let's okay, let's do poor man's debugging left right does it even come here I mean it should come there right so because we actually we are comparing them ba, 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 ba. yes okay LTGT so um, yeah I think I put GT here yeah okay yeah so we do that Call GT, it calls lower than. Um, let's see if it actually goes here, for example. Just like now is the question where it actually, what, what does it consider those objects to be? Okay, it does go through, so they are not documents, that's a good thing. And theoretically, it should be this, right? So we should come to that point. Uh, yes, we do. Okay, that's that's good to know. Now, sequence shouldn't be. Um, I mean, you can do a very stupid thing and just insert sequence just to say Boolean. Null, which should not be the case because we saw number, which again should not be the case. Plain um, binary date, date, come on, date, yes, and uh, string, and just be sure none can it be that it just doesn't detect anything and returns none is that the case it just returns undefined and, and that basically screws everything over uh yes it does oh great um okay so i'm blah, 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 remove that stuff remove that stuff remove that stuff uh this means that the utility method for okay i don't need that stuff um is date was it right so it doesn't do its job correctly um i went his date equals there we go instance of reculite so console log let's check is uh, so is date date and date instance of reculite That is a lot of 
checks. Okay, we um, yeah. I guess that was a bad idea. <laughs> All right. Oh, there we go. That's our stuff. Is date false? Uh, great. But I think basically all this regular date. Yes, can I please see the date file? Um, so let me think. Is date equals basically instance of doesn't really check that correctly. It seems maybe I'm not not sure why the hell that happens. But essentially, if we say return date, uh, record type, yeah, record type, uh, I think we can do it like this equals time, right? And uh, date has own property. So what does it have? App of time. Um, what else does it have? Uh, maybe time. Yeah, okay. And it should have time zone. Uh, his own property time zone that should be a date right because it, it doesn't seem like to, to have anything else because the, i think it fails to check it because this looks like a plain object to me it doesn't have any of those functions that actually recall date has for a moment and you know we saw and all that kind of stuff so theoretically if we do this Uh, what? Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. Now there are some other bugs. God damn it, thing. Okay, then. Um, I guess it, w it would be easier probably to figure out how to pass in the uh, database to constructor, I guess. Um, right, uh, Reculite server. So npm run db create right okay and um ba, 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 ba. Uh, we actually uh okay i don't care about that for now regulate server how to pass uh do, 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 do. i wonder if there's actually a bug about that where, 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 Correctly. Now there's not a bug, so it might be worth filling that out once I'm done streaming. Um, I wonder if I can repeat that actually with a unit test. But that's a different question. Uh, some Amazon bonkers. Um, okay, let me think. I think it'd be connection uh, host, right? We want to see. Um, there's no issues about that. Okay, so let's see host. There you go, config JS. Okay, so we do have this config thing. So now where the hell is it? Everything DB. Search. Ta -ta 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 -ta. Yes, everything DB. No, there's no one. Uh, I, I guess we can just search for require config, right? No. With well, uh, concif, that's not what I wanted to write. Uh, yeah, meta. Okay, those are tests. Index. Uh, config changes. Leap database. Is that the thing? Test, test, test. Test, 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 test. Leap query. Changes. Config. Mm, right, okay, so wait, how does it, how does it actually uses the lib query host? No, that's definitely not what we want to see. Everything db host is, no, but I mean, that will be used somewhere at least, right? Uh, I guess this is the test config, localhost. I have, I have no idea how it connects to the local everything to be, which is kind of weird if you think about that. Um, and what we can do is we can ditch the Reculite completely and just rely on the um, uh, instance of 
Reculite running, right? Or sorry, of instance of um, RethingDB running live. So yes, okay, we don't care about that anymore. So theoretically, if I kill that and then do npm test, still should work, right? Yeah, there we go. So now it works against the real database. I guess we will have to ditch Reculite, which is a bit disappointing, but we'll see, you know, if I can actually, I don't know if I have time to track down that bug that looks very strange. Um, okay, so we are gonna do what? We're gonna do yarn. Uh, you know what, let's, uh, let's actually npm check minus u, let's check and upgrade all the dependencies and then rebuild the yarn log file. Um, okay, we got a new version of Express, new version of Thinky, new version of Winston, new version of Tape, uh, some minor updates uh, and major updates for Babel ESLint, Airbnb config for, oh yeah, I haven't updated that in a while. Some ESLint plugins, super test, uh, yeah, that looks good. Oh, it just scrolls over, okay, yeah, let's go. So we are gonna update all of that. Uh, the cool thing about upgrading when you have unit tests is that once you run npm test, you will know exactly if there are any breaking changes in major packages. So that's like one of the um, good reasons to have unit tests, you know. Okay, um, yeah, so basically once we do that, that would mean that we are, I can close all of that stuff. That would mean we can actually, um, Ta, 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 ta. We can actually, uh, let me think, db index thinky, yes, db config from config. So we are importing it from config. Yeah, so finally, and we can uh, just say that, you know, minus e db expert, um, it's experts db. And that should work theoretically. So let's see. Done. Okay, cool. Uh, let's kill the node modules and rebuild them with yarn because that first of all should be way more uh, sane and second of all, it will build us our yarn log file. And it's way quicker than with NPM actually. Doesn't make my, comp my notebook fly away. Okay, we had something, something, something. Okay, that still looks good. Right, uh, done, cool. NPM test, make sure we're still uh, missing commenting. Oh, okay, now we have, oh, right, because the um, uh, ESLint config updated, so we still need to uh, DB questions. What is this comma dangle? Uh, what, what is he complaining about? I guess, um, okay, which was, what was the file? D, yes, sir, CDB question, yes. What exactly you don't like? Um, yes, lint, show output, what do you know? Um, configuration rule is invalid. Okay, so we have some outdated, um, JSXLA anchor has content. Right. Okay, I guess I have to restart the code because. Right, there we go. And are we live yet? Yes, Lint, come on, work. No, loaded, server is running. Okay. Oh, there we go. Now it shows it. Um, it was, the, oh, it now has the dangling comma in functions, which is not quite what we want here. Um, okay, let's see, uh, yes, lint comma dangle, uh, that's what we want. So, and uh, comma dangle, yes. Um, ta -da -da -da. Let's see, does it have any config options? So I want it only for objects. Yeah, there we go, cool. Uh, so we want error, but we want it uh, functions ignore. There we go, that's what I wanna say, right? Uh, well, that's wrong. So in theory, now it should be, 
uh, yeah, okay, I guess I have to say uh, never disallows trading commas. So, okay, I guess I have to put all of them like this, which is slightly annoying, but hey, okay, I can do that. So, um, pum, 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 always, right? Uh, exports, imports. I guess exports, imports are not really that important. Um, we just want them for objects and uh, yeah, there we go. Okay, uh, th 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 yeah, we already have code open and PM test, please. There was some, uh, oh God, okay. Um, now wait. <laughs> That is way more errors than it was before. Source user update. Okay, where are the errors? Oh, um, always multi-line, there we go. That's what I want, right? That's what we want, yeah, there you go. That should fix it. Right, cool. Okay, a sync request utility thing. Uh, what do you don't like here? Uh, yeah, okay, you want the parents here and you don't want the parents here. Yeah, that's the new Airbnb config, which I quite like actually, so we will go with that. Okay, uh, yeah, no, the tests are running fine. Um, get diff, let me see. Uh, yeah, we did that, we did that. Uh, let's put the tabs back back actually. Because we want nice output. Um, let's check the diff. MPM, uh, wait, 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 wait. So this was, yes, yes, I think request. Okay, this is our fixes. We remove Reculite. Uh, cool, that looks good. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, yeah, before we actually commit that, let's take our commands for Docker. So we got the DB running. We are going to do exactly this. We're gonna pull that and CI build ref name is master because that's our branch name, right? We don't really do any other uh, at the moment. So we're gonna pull that image. We're gonna run exactly the same task command as here. And we're gonna see if that actually works. And if it does, then we fixed our issue. Um, we need the full thing. Come on. There we go. Um, yes, and then we're gonna run that. And we're gonna run npm test. And theoretically that should work, right? Yeah, there we go. Perfect, cool. So what I'm gonna do now is I am gonna, ta ta ta, yeah, okay. Uh, get commit minus m fix server ci test error drop reculite due to bug update depths that's a bit too much for one commit but hey, i'm feeling lazy let's push it and um i think i will force um uh, what oh there was some some change oh yeah right i did the um, uh, change the readme to the get UI, right. Okay, uh, so now I'm gonna force mirror synchronization here because otherwise GitLab will take like a few hours to do that. And that's not what we want. So come on, and then we're gonna make sure that it actually works fine, pending, there we go. Okay, so we're gonna wait, like while it's doing, we can, um, okay, I'm gonna close that after. So what I'm gonna write here is to do file bug. I mean, I, no, I, I'm just I'm just gonna remember that. I don't wanna write it down. Uh, <laughs> so what we need to do now is to actually have a look at the client while it's making it work there with a CI and see what we need to do for release, right? So I, I mean, we're, <laughs> we spend way too much time actually um, doing the backend stuff. I expected it to be simpler, but hey, you know, stuff like this happens. All right, so let's see. We got actually our serve thing. 
and currently it always uh, plugs in the uh, hot middleware it uses the hot replacement config so what we need to do for um, for uh, deployment is that we need to actually change it to um, uh, we actually need to change it to a proper I guess we need to separate the CSS from JavaScript we need to uh, remove the hot reloads that's actually quite a lot of work I, I guess I mean I, I think we can use the um, express itself just fine but, uh, let me think then we also need docker file um, because we don't have one yet and I think that will be it so I actually let's see here what we have anything in progress actually um, there is the shard app that I built that already has most of that so we can just blatantly copy out of there that should work right uh, being lazy is a good thing oh do, 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 do. let me think it was in the server I believe uh, we got a webpack config uh, I mean, I don't think we care about vendor uh, part here much, or maybe we do. I don't know. I mean, kind of the, the idea is that, like, you know, if you if you split your JavaScript into your own code and vendor code, and vendor code then doesn't change much, you can um, quickly update your app without the users needing to recache or re-download the vendor pack all the time. But mm, I don't know if we care about that. Um, like, okay, let's try to look at the webpack config so I guess yeah well we'll just go with one file for now but we're gonna see how big is it I mean actually it's a, it's maybe a good idea to just start doing exactly that um, localhost uh, 3000 I think it was yes there you go expect oh let's have a look uh, network so our app is 3.2 megabytes right now but as you can see it's not minified and there's like a lot of comments and everything which you know three megs is is actually not that much for um, unminified uncompressed app file but we will actually i mean definitely have to change that because you know three megs is a lot if you think about production environment um all right so what do we want to do here we do CSS modules, uh, Babel, yeah, okay, that looks fine. Yeah, for production, we use the React Optimize plugin already, so that's a good thing. Um, blah, 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 plugins, Lodash plugin, we don't, do we use Lodash actually? Because Lodash plugin can save you a ton of like space and time, basically. Yeah, we do use Lodash, uh, so it might be a good idea. Uh, okay, um, yeah, so let's let's do that I don't know I'm not sure if we have uh, we already use transform runtime so and uh, to, 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 let me think I need the package JSON from there um, yarn odds uh, let me think it should be dev right because it's dev dependency uh, law dash plugin where is it can okay, law dash no that's the law dash itself um, <laughs> Babel plugin Lodash. There we go. That's how it's called. Uh, yes, please. Okay, so we got the Lodash plugin that should decrease the size of the bundle significantly. All of that stuff is fine. So we're actually interested in. Um, yeah, wait a second. So yeah there we go that's what we're interested in so we, we we are gonna modify surf file and uh there you go so first of all get the environment right so const or i guess we just say is production let's do it this way yeah, process and no denf um equals production right so if uh, node env is provided as production we are going to be treating it as one okay and then the first thing is um, let's call it setup plugins and then here we're gonna if not in prod setup hot reload 
Okay, if not production, uh, no, what pro, um, yeah, right, is production. Ugh, come on, no, come on. Gonna say config plugins, uh, plugins. Um, uh, yeah, I guess let's just push the bits in there. So we're gonna push hot reload plugin, great. And uh, then we're gonna push the no errors plugin. There we go. And we can kill the hood reload from here. So that's the plugins. Uh, and then uh, again, entry point, uh, all right, entry point for hood load, for hot reload, there we go. And then if is, so again, if it's not production only, then we need the hot reload, right? Um, yeah, I need to come here. Okay, then we set up compiler, set up the config. That's all fine. That's all fine as well. Again, this thing is only needed if it's not production, right? Because we only need the hot middleware for hot reloading. Hot, hot reload middleware if not in production. Uh, all of that stuff is fine. So theoretically, right now, if we do node and production and uh, npm start the uh, we should get it without hot reload right and the bundle is now a bit smaller so uh, theory console should be empty now because the hot reload is not here cool so that works right next step um, let's see so uh, next step is to add yeah so we can actually change uh, um, okay, um, if is production, so let's do it this way. Tweak config for production. First of all, uh, set dev tool to cheap source map and uh, disable debug because we don't need any debugging here. Um, yeah, let's use extract CSS. So we're going to extract all the styles into the um, separate file. Um, now let me remember where the hell was that. Uh, yeah, there we go. That's what we want. So, uh, but it should be const. I don't think, I don't think I actually, we actually have that plugin, right? Yeah, judging by the uh, error we don't see on dev um, no, minus minus dev and then there we go strike text by back plugin so okay I think we're gonna rewrite that a bit so we extract text into main CSS and we actually need to add it to index, uh, HTML so we take loader um, so we go through all loaders and then uh, basically see if there's any CSS and that's okay that's was a four uh, formatting, so we do that. Uh, style it. There we go. Delete. Okay, so that that basically goes through all the loaders, checks if there's CSS. Uh, if there is, I guess we can actually change it because we're now using. Um, I think it was right. So if it includes, uh, so yeah, we take loaders, we find index, if there's any CSS loader in it, we continue, if not, we just return whatever there is. So if there is CSS loader, we take that and replace CSS with, uh, first of all, we add the minimize flag, which will uh, minimize it. Uh, again, if there's like, you know, additional ones, we add the Ampersand. If it's just CSS, we add just CSS minimize. Um, the same thing we do for style loader. So if there's any style loading, uh, we add. Um, we actually delete the style loader because we don't need it. So we, as you can see, I just like slice it, take the first one, and then uh, slice it into one part, and then just join it with hash bang, uh, which means you know we get everything aside from the uh, style loader. And that's it. Uh, so the thing now is if we do this, 
Uh, okay, I screwed something up. Loader split is not a function. Um, to, 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 let me think. Loaders. Ta, ta, ta. Plugins, query loader, 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 loader. Style CSS model. Um, okay, so what is it like? Loaders, slice, element loader. Um, right, so I guess it screwed up the. Uh, okay, let's see. Console log config mod module um, loaders, right? There we go. And uh, why is doesn't like exactly? So here, loader object object. Um, I guess let's do JSON. No, JSON stringify that stuff just to make it a bit more readable. So where did I screw up? Um, loader, uh, loader, webpack loader, yes. Options, loader, CSS, minimize modules. That looks correct to me. But wait, why is there actually two? Uh, find index, yeah. So it replaces style with self, which looks fine for me. Why doesn't it? Oh wait, did we? We did, we did, we, um, it might be that there is a newer, okay, let's, you know what, extract text plugin webpack. I think it might be a good idea to update to latest versions of packages here first and then check the docs. So we got the Redux, minor updates, Express, mock store. Okay, we got the RxJS to um yeah let's let's check the release notes so what was changed um yes do we know there is no where's the change log there we go ajax with credentials after open okay there's bug fixes uh no breaking changes so we're good okay cool uh babel core so those are all fine enzyme yes lean web packet Hot middleware, good. Oh, that pack is now two version two already is yeah, that's that's a good thing. And there's a new jest which is actually even better than before. It's always great. Um non-semver. Uh okay, those are just yeah. But I mean, I guess let's let's update them and see if the um, npm test actually fails. Okay, uh, yeah, there we go. So um mm -hmm, extract fallback style load. Oh, okay, so now it has the different uh, different uh, syntax basically, right? Rules, okay. Module rules for Webpack. Oh, I guess, I guess this is the new Webpack 2 syntax, okay. I'm, I guess we're gonna rewrite the Webpack file then. Ta -ta -ta, ta -ta -ta -ta, get started, there we go. I mean, why not? Let's, let's have a look at the new webpack. I heard a lot of good things about it. Component, blah, 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 blah. Yes, show me the config. Model experts, entry point, output. That looks the same. Um, conclusion, migrating from one to two. That's what I want to see. Um, modules. Modules resolve. Uh, yeah, we don't really use the resolve as far as I remember, right? No, we do use resolve. Uh, see resolving from the uh, replace the single option resolve modules. Okay. So we gonna say resolve at uh, no, that's modules. Okay. And the modules then contains an array of whatever you want to resolve. Cool. So path resolve root folder and node modules. That's much more shorter. I like it. Resolve extension. Okay, resolve is dropped. I got that. Module loaders is now module rules. Okay, rules. Not sure why they need to rename it, but hey. 
um, okay instead of loaders you now use okay so use and then all those things become uh, objects and then you say loader style is that how it works loader CSS modules and I guess okay and then now you can provide options so uh, yeah that, that actually is quite much nicer uh, let's format it this way so get style and then loader css options um there we go options what modules true modules true right yeah that that's a way more explicit syntax actually uh i guess exclude still works i hope uh is there a link yes there is a link uh, that, that is the not not what I wanted to see. Um, to, to, to exclude is there? There's no talk about excluding. Um, code splitting, development, shaming. Um, building for production. Yeah, like how the hell? There's search. Okay, so let's try search exclude. Okay, rule exclude. So it still works the same way. Good. Um, let's see. Loaders, loader, lo no, loader style. Loader CSS. I mean, okay, it's not, you know, not terrible changes. So loaders, um, loader Babel. And I guess that is gonna mean that this all this stuff goes here as it, it that is wrong formatting as um, options, right? Am I am I assuming? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, yeah, okay. Which means to, 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 to use rules use. Does, ah, okay, so this becomes use, this becomes use, and I guess it should be an array, right? So it's probably, or at least we will use an array for consistency sake. <laughs> um, loader, JSON. Okay, those are gonna change a bit. Use, um, no, array, loader, URL, and then um, yeah, I guess let's split it into several lines. Options. I hope that works as I think it works. Limit mime type. Yes, and this right. There we go. Okay. Um, da, 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 use ten loader there. There we go. URL. Uh, let's again split it. I mean, it's kind of more verbose, but it's way more explicit, and I, I would say I like it. My type. There we go. Options. There we go. Okay. Use. Uh, ten, no. Loader. URL. Options. Ten, 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 come on. Limit thousand, yes. There we go, and that's done. Okay, just a few more. Let's do it this way. Use uh, ton ton loader URL. Uh, yeah, that should be a string, right? Options. Uh, that actually means no. Okay, we cannot really uh, take the options completely out because they use the different mime types but uh, yes and uh, there we go done cool so we rewritten it the test regex plugin is it's good but the <laughs> the prompt everywhere is really annoying uh, is there a way to disable it no it's not um, then I am gonna disable the oh no wait this is this one right uh, disable always just gonna enable it whenever I need it. Ah, I have to reload the damn thing. Okay, um, yes. 
There you go, much better. Uh, what is there? Do you want to go away with this stuff? Chaining loaders. Uh, yeah, okay, I got that part. Oh, okay, you can actually just use strings as well. Um, well, that's a bit late of explaining, but whatever. Let's let's go with this. It will be easier to parse. Um, okay, that looks good. JSON loader is not supported anymore. Uh huh. I we actually use any JSON uh, from. This is a good question. I mean, the only thing that we have here, JSON is package JSON, but I don't think we actually import it anywhere. So maybe we can ditch it. Um, no modules and then just rebuild the yarn file and let's have a quick look at the, our pipelines. They should be successful. Uh, still going, okay. Yarn, there we go. Uh, user doesn't exist. What? Okay, then um, it failed. User doesn't exist. Wait, did I? Oh, it was probably because I have. Right, okay, so we'll have to fix that in a moment as well. Uh, yeah, that is, that is, uh, t -t -t okay, we decided to do this in order to iron out differences between Webpack, no JSON browser, if I support JSON out of, okay, so you don't need JSON loader anymore, it just works, cool, that, that's a good thing. Uh, loader in configuration resolved relative to context, uh-huh, uh-huh. Uglifying plugin source map. Okay, well, we haven't gotten to the plugins yet. You can go the hell away. Okay, npm test just to make sure everything works fine. No, it doesn't. Fails horribly. No snapshot header found. Uh, okay, so how do I update my snapshot? Uh, did, did, what? Just 19. Uh, let's have a look. There's probably some flag to rebuild the snapshots, right? Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Snapshot updates uh, before, after. Yeah. So how do I? I mean, I don't want to delete them all and redo them all, but just help. Um, I guess node module. No. Node modules bin just help. Um, test runner update snapshots. Oh, okay, minus u. Okay, uh, just minus u. Go. Cool. Perfect. So, um, yeah, okay, I guess. Uh, git add source is gonna update the some um, update just just snapshots to fit just 19 Let's commit this way uh, do, 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 right um, okay we don't need that anymore we agify agify okay I think Thing. basically if we do npm start right uh, now it won because we are no what oh yeah I wrote test again uh, I mean it never hurts to test one more time but that's not what I wanted to do um, so I am gonna remove that for now uh, let's okay let's not remove it let's just comment that out right so and then npm start so this should just add but Webpack options validation. Okay. Uh, I guess entry points and plugins, right? So they are now different. Mm, right. So what do we have here? We have defined plugin. Is that still a thing? Uh, it looks looks like it should be correct. 
uh, how it might be replacement plugin is that still a thing there's no mentions so it should work no errors plugin so no mentions as well entry um, okay let's see uh, ta -ta -ta. entry yes that seems to be this fine as well so what throw web pack options yeah that's a very helpful error web pack that that's gonna really help me figure out what's wrong with my config um serve at 75 75 is probably where i fit it in yeah okay oh, come on. module rules right okay uh let's see resolve module rules that, that looks correct um for fuck's sake seriously like, hey, we're gonna use use here, but God bloody damn it. Are you kidding me? Oh my God. Oh. <laughs> why? Like, why? No, can we just be consistent, please? Oh, okay. So I actually have to roll back half of my changes. Um, let me do it this way. There we go. Now we're back here and now we can just take the, okay, so what was the difference here? Uh, resolve, that's the one we need. And then rules is the other one we need. And then here, use over here. And then use over here. It actually should be just use here, right? So because it doesn't matter and I, yeah, I think, okay, let's, since we're using and use over here, the uh, loader, no, it's not use, right? Because it's just one. Okay. So it's just options here. Oh, God. <laughs> I was, I was so happy about consistency, but I guess that's not exactly how it works. Does it work? No, it doesn't. What do I don't like anymore? Um, webpack options validation there. Come on, that's not helpful at all. Um, use for multiple loaders and then loader for one loader. So we get multiple loaders here. I guess I can just say style and then I can just say here the CSS loader, right? That That should work. Yes. Okay. So what, what do you not like now? Oh, Jason loader is something that can be killed. Still doesn't like it. Right. Okay. Um, I, I wonder if we need to resolve at all. Like maybe we just work without it. Yeah, it still doesn't work. Um, Okay, I can ditch that. Uh, I, I wonder if, if I just run node modules, bin that, if I just run that pack, maybe it will give me more. Ah, okay, now we have a proper, okay. So basically they don't, don't uh, they do not write proper errors if you use it through API, which is kind of bonkers. Um, all right. Uh, error and entry model can I find can resolve Babel in yeah okay yeah I know I know it can resolve stuff so okay this is no longer present so theoretically that should work uh, so long allowed to omit loaders of it <laughs> okay but you omit them no you don't omit them okay cool I guess I guess we add loaders everywhere I'm not sure I like it anymore. Damn it. Um, ten, 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 ten loader, there we go. It's like, let's be a bit more explicit, but just in some places, not everywhere. Let's kill that, uh, yeah. Oh, but now it shows the error correctly. Deprecation, query, okay, where did I pass query? I didn't pass query anywhere, I think. Oh, I passed query here, okay, right, of course. Um, Yes, that's what we want. Uh, options limit my 
Yeah, no, wait. Uh, okay, I guess, did I screw up something? No, I didn't. No, wait, yes, this. This. Okay, I guess we'll have to do it like this. And uh, yeah, looks good. Okay, and then fix the error over here. And that looks good, I think. Uh, query string, okay, where do I, I think I cleaned out all query strings. Options, environment, Gee, I don't have any query strings. What are you talking about? Or was it in, um, is it in here? No, it's not. So what the hell are you complaining about? Um, received a non-string value, which can be problematic. Yeah, but I don't have any queries. Do I? Yeah, all the question marks on in my regular expressions. What are you talking about? Options. Um, okay, query. No, I don't use query. Query, no. Question mark, no. Okay. I, okay, I'm not. I'm not sure what it talks about, so I'll just ignore it. Um, let's see. So theoretically, no. Uh, okay, no errors plugin. No emit on error plugin. Um, yeah, we can do that. I guess this one. Restart that. There we go. And okay, HMR works. Okay, cool. We migrated to Webpack 2 after some struggles. Um, right, I guess so. This this now looks fine. This now is not fine because we have to add the extract text plugin, which we can do by going here. Okay, so require extract text plugin, model rules. Okay, use extract. Okay, um, how do you, does it, I mean, it should not be applied in the development, right? Because we want to hold mode reload and all that kind of stuff. Um, which mean, oh, so you just wrap, no, let's fall back, use CSS loader. Okay, so extract, yeah, so added to plugins, right? That's what I did, no, I didn't do that yet, so. We say, uh, where are our plugins? Yeah, there we go. Config, plugins, push, extract, CSS, right? There we go, there's our plugin. Next, what we need to do is we need to take module uh, rules, right? Map them to new rules. And then uh, to, 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 to if, 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 I don't know if we need this second one. Yeah, I think we just can ditch this one. Ta, 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 there we go. Um, right, and then if, if we have CSS loader inside, but I mean, I actually know exactly what rules we have to fix, right? So it's the first and second one, but I mean, it's fine, okay. So uh, loader, uh, use in this case. So loader use find it uh, includes style. So if we have style loader, that's our test case, it's fine. Use, use, um, no, in this case, we actually, that's not what we wanna do. We wanna say use, and then we say the extract text plugin extract. And I guess in this case, we can just say this, right? Because I mean, there don't really any, oh no, we do, we do need to provide um, module. Do we care about module? I mean, I wonder if you, we need to give it say the uh, CSS minimize. 
it will be fine. Okay, uh, the question is source maps. Uh, fewer with dev tools to extract text. But no, that's not what I want. I want to see extract use fallback public path. Sounds loader. Um, does it do all the work automatically? Is that how it happens? So where's my node and thing uh, production and PM start? I have no idea where this warning comes from. Maybe it's the uh, those middleware things. Okay, so theoretically, if I reload it now, there should be no. Yeah, exactly. And now if we take the index and we add a style over here, I always forget how the style um, elements look actually. That is my <laughs> pain of existence. Um, source uh, client index link. Oh yeah, right. It should be link not style. This main CSS. Yes, that should do. And it works. Okay, so we now have a nice CSS of 200 kilobytes. Is it actually minified? Does it actually do anything? No, it doesn't. So yeah, that that's a that is a huge. C oh, no, okay. So it does. That's actually the bootstrap, and this is our non-minified CSS. So how do I tell it to minify stuff? CSS loader. Um, maybe in the same way. Does it support the same syntax here? I sure as hell hope it does. Options, um, modules, true, minify, minify, true, I think it was, or what, what was it? Um, wait a second, let me quickly check it here. Webpack config, uh, no, no, webpack config, right. Modules. Uh, it was in a. Where was it? It was in the in the server, right? Yeah, that's that's the. Um, I need the serve thing. Uh, do, 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 let me think. Uh, modules. Minimize. It wasn't minify. It was minimize. I I I did. No, that that's wrong. That that's what I want to see. Um, right. Let's see if that works. Do, 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 do. And well, at least it seems to be compiling without too many or without any warnings or, or errors, just with this deprecation warning, which I have no idea where it comes from. And uh, now, yeah, there we go. Now it's nicely minimized and minified and clean. So that's it's a good thing. We got that. Okay. That is good. So extract styles in the file. We got that. Now, what else uh, we can? Yeah, so those those plugins, because why not? Um, so add uh, JS optimization plugins, right? So because we want to deduply uh, order occurrence and then deduplify that. Uh, and then we want to push the uglify JS plugin, which I think um, yeah, I closed it. Yeah, so uglify JS warnings, uh, source map, compress, minimize true, minimize loaders. Uh, okay, there's a new plugin for that. Yes, I do want that. Thank you very much. Plugins push. Right, that's what we want to push and clean that stuff. Uh, yeah, and then we do compress without warnings. I think it was the same, right? Warnings true. Yeah, exactly. Okay, cool. But is it now false by default? Oh, okay, cool. So I don't even need to provide that. That is perfect. That is actually really good. So you can just do that. And if we now start it, we should get a nice small JavaScript bundle. I hope so, at least. <laughs> Let's see how that goes.
All right, there we go. So we got what? Uh, wait, wait. Where's my CSS? CSS is now somehow screwed up. That is a bit disappointing. Um, but the JavaScript is now 800 kilobytes, which is way better than it was before. Um, and the question is, which plugin screws up the CSS loading? Does it needs to be in some order with um, did your plugin has been removed? Ah, maybe it screws up everything. Okay, what about the occurrence order is now on by default? Ah, okay. So I don't even, I don't even need that. Uh, right, breaking change does not work. Okay, so okay, I see. I see, all right, so yarn at, uh, it just worked somehow. Ah, I guess it's released now, right? Uh, let me break it. Um, let me have a quick look, extract. Okay, it's too old, so it, it, it's now it should be working. NPM stop, and no, and it did, there you go. Uh, okay, so in theory, that should be working just fine, I think. Head. Yeah, we got the disk main CSS. Come on. Why are styles not applied? I am a bit... I am a bit confused. Is it? Is it because of the? Um, no, it's not. I mean, there there is styles, right? But container, uh, I guess HTML. Does it applies the modules thing? Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay, right, because in this case, yeah, so here we should have, here we should have modules and here we should not have modules. So it's actually way better to just manually patch them, I guess, right? So in this case, uh, modules, rules, which one? So the first one would be, um, I guess they can just use this right so the first rule should be uh, yes and then the second rule yep yeah, okay so this is my screw up completely <coughs> <coughs> sorry um, right so this is the first rule and which should use modules and should be minimized and then the second one should be patched, but it should be only minimized and should not use modules, right? So um, if we recompile that, that should start uh, applying CSS correctly. Because the second one loads them from node modules, right? And we only want, uh, we don't want to use um, CSS modules on that because they will be scoped and that doesn't make any sense because it should be global CSS. Cool. Come on, now it should work. Yeah, there we go, nice. So we trimmed the size of the uh, bundle significantly. I am uh, gonna commit that. Uh, let me just quickly check. So we added that, that seems fine. That looks okay. Yeah, okay, cool. Get status, get, uh, get status, get commit. Uh, upgrade steps, uh, migrate webpack config to version 2.0, start preparing a ring client for deployment. Guess we would need like one more live stream to finish that actually. But first, before we wrap the whole thing up, let's go into the server and fix that damn test finally. Okay, so now we're actually running it. Um, we stop. We're gonna stop that RM from one void. Yes, so now we have uh, literally nothing here, right? So, what I'm gonna do here is I am gonna 
take uh, right it's uh, up top new, 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 new. GitLab CI come on come here let me yeah so I'm gonna run this just run new clean database let me repool um, this thing and then I'm gonna run this again where you ran it right so it shouldn't be a major problem it's actually it might be worse um, updating the project to node 7 6 which has the sync await by default no, 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 that's not what I want. Uh, yes, yes, and theoretically we should get the same error here, right? Creating pool, yeah, there we go. Okay, so the problem is it doesn't seem to initialize the uh, question thinky, thinky user, yeah, okay. Now, the question is where to actually initialize the database because I forgot all of that. I think it'd be ready then. Yeah, so it should, I think I do the same in a test, right? I wait for the, think it'd be ready then. Yeah, there you go. Oh, because I delete them. Oh, right, okay. That, that's a good point. I don't actually need to delete anything anymore, which is kind of cool because um, we don't, we, we no longer care about the database, right? So our tests uh, we can actually just require main over here and then rewrite this main to just be executed immediately right because we don't we don't really care like we don't pass anything to it anymore so that should be fine um, come on oh, come on docker docker ps minus a docker kill uh, reverence yeah there you go docker kill all docker rem exited done okay cool uh in theory that should be sufficient get csm use db handling handling in tests server tests uh no not why use fix db handling there we go push so that should fix it uh and uh let's just quickly go over here and yeah, I guess that's gonna be a good point to wrap it up. I am, uh, okay, I would actually, uh, no, wait, that seems old. I am, no, wait, what? That is, yeah, that's the old, yeah, okay, but it's still running. Oh, I guess it, it's frozen here as well. So uh, let's let's not murder the GitLab CI because I love those guys. Let's just cancel it. Uh, right, and then I'm gonna resynchronize it and um, I guess we can wrap this video up here. So I guess we would need one more, uh, one and a half hour, one hour uh, live stream or so. Uh, and um, after that, we are gonna be done with the deployment and uh, we're gonna see what goes from there. So thank you for staying with me as usual and um, see you around next time. Bye-bye.